Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to another episode of the Hindi Project podcast. Uh, so this was the interesting situation where I was coming to sit with Sheikh Ada and uh, at the Isna Mosque, and then he pulled in Sheikh Daoud Butt, and we had a conversation together. And then at some point, Sheikh Ada had to leave to do a nikah, and you'll hear, you know, him giving a speech in the background in the masjid. Um, but I got to sit down with Sheikh Dawood and his wife. We had a really interesting conversation about going for Hajj um, and, you know, their emotions going into it. And it was really powerful, interesting conversation. So I hope you guys are going to enjoy it. Um, uh, yeah, check it out. And, you know, I had a lot of fun doing it. And I think you guys are going to really enjoy listening to it. Yeah, going for Hajj soon too. We're going for Hajj, inshallah. It's going to be we'll my wife's first that. Hajj. Um, yeah, we will talk about Hajj. So, it's your first Hajj. How do you feel about going for Hajj for the first time ever in your life and possibly the last time as well, unless Allah makes me really rich? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Alhamdulillah, I'm, I feel really excited, a little bit nervous um, because I don't like the heat and I'm going in August. So, that's probably my number one concern yeah. is just how hot it's going to be and uh, how uncomfortable I'm going to be. But... I'm excited, alhamdulillah. I think it's a, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So I feel like I know how. Uh, I feel really grateful that Allah is bringing me there. I didn't think it was going to happen. It was very like, um, kind of like a last-minute thing that I knew Daud was going to be taking a group. And then I guess, subhanAllah, when Allah invites you, He just kind of puts things into place and things just kind of fell into place. And it was like, okay, I'm taking a group. And then it, it worked out that everything fell into place and I was able to actually join him. So, alhamdulillah, I'm grateful for that. That's awesome. No, it's, it's so true though. Like when it's, even if when you, when you want to go so badly and it's not written for you, it's just not going to go. And when it's written for you, it's everything, it just, it makes it happen. Even, yeah. even if I'm still waiting for the visa. So that t- <laughs> I, I'm still like, I've been packing my suitcase and I keep yeah. saying to Daoud, what if you don't get the visa? What if you don't get the visa? Then all of this would have been for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get mine either. So I'm still waiting for it. But yeah. I think that's normal. Just yeah. tell her, like, you know, that's how it is. <laughs> yeah. If part of this weekend, do you guys will get it? Or... They supposed said to be by Friday, <coughs> today's Friday, Friday yeah, so, so we'll see what happens. Most likely then, you'll um, get it, like it'll be today and then they'll be giving Yeah, it. if not early oh. next week, Monday or We're Tuesday. We're not flying yeah. out for a while, so it's all good. Yeah, oh yeah, you guys are leaving a bit later, because I'm leaving on Thursday, so. But yeah, it's hot. I mean, I went last year and it's it's hot and it's, uh, it's a bit tough. Um, one thing that was awesome everybody else had it i didn't have it last year but i bought it this year is like the spray bottle mm-hmm. with the fan you guys get that yeah. yeah and the cooling towels so i think we should get the fan one too um uh, we just yeah. got spray bottles because i've always i've always been a fan of promoting the spray bottles when people go for hajj because yeah. you can easily make wudu with like barely any water for so sure. that's the main reason why uh, but the fan thing, a lot of people have been using it. There's even some that like plug into your mobile phone, so you can just hold your phone and have a fan blowing on you. But then it drains your battery it as well. Um, but yeah, question: What is what? What was the hardest thing about Hajj last year? Oh my God! So we had. <laughs> like, where do you start? <laughs> so we happened to go with a group last year that, unfortunately, maybe this is good to talk about as we have the marriage certificate in front of us. The leader of the group <clears throat> decided. So he went with the group. The group went from Toronto to Jordan, Amman, and from Amman they went to Medina. So he followed them to Amman, and then they went to Medina, and he caught a different flight to Beirut where he married a second wife. Nice. And his Hajj Was operations... Was he already in Ihram? Because <laughs> that would violate his Ihram. <laughs> I don't... I guess he was going to no. do it on the plane. And then the, to make matters worse, his first wife ran the operations out While of, he out was of getting Ottawa. married. While well, he was getting married. Oh, no, so no. she was extremely upset and uncooperative, obviously, <laughs> during this time. And I was only supposed to be there to be the religious guide and nothing else. And now everything was kind of thrown on my plate. Mm. So, And this is like happening <clears throat> while you're there? While I'm there. Alhamdulillah, there was one brother who was there as a regular person, but he happened, just by coincidence, he happened to have run Hajj for many years. But he had decided this year he's just going to go by himself. He's going to do ibadah. He's not going to worry about administration or anything like that. And Allah wrote that he would be in the group because I needed his help the whole way. But, yeah, that that made things difficult. Um, The other major difficulty is that we were the last people to leave (laughs) from (laughs) Arafah. Oh, we have a <laughs> Sheikh Adal's back Sheikh, on. Sheikh back on. <laughs> this is how you perform in Nikah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we were the last group to leave Arafah to go to Muzdalifah. And when we arrived in Muzdalifah, 
um, the, uh, they had closed off the road. So usually what they'll do is you could send the old people back to Mina, but uh, they closed off the road so the old people couldn't leave. And we had a lot of old people and they did not want, they were not capable of staying in Mustafa. So I just gathered some Shabab from our group, we had a good group and, and good people. And we literally pushed wheelchairs of all of the elders from Muzdalifa, walking them all the way back to Mina, like about two hours of pushing the wheelchair until we got them back. So that was the hardest. That's tough. Yeah. But you know what? It's always needed. And that's what I was telling our group is that if you think that you're going to go and you're not going to help someone else, then you're really not getting Hajj, right? You have to put yourself in a position where you're going to look after yourself and you're going to look after the rest of the group as well. So... Yeah, it's, uh, you're going to be tested in a ways that you never imagined you're going to be tested. Like, yeah. Whatever you think you've mentally prepared yourself for, something else is going to happen and come up. So. And that's the thing. You usually prepare for so many things and those things don't happen, but a whole list of other things other happen. Things happen. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys, alhamdulillah, you have a good group. I visited your group uh, last time when I was there. They're organized, which is important. Alhamdulillah. Uh, um, I don't know, like, what are your emotions right now? Are you guys, like... Uh, just, uh, like, trying to, like, mentally place myself there and go through go through everything in my head about what's what's to expect, what's, the, what's each step. So I think a lot of it is just, I, like, there's a lot of build-up. Like, I keep, pe- keep telling people that I'm going for Hajj and stuff, and people are like, oh, mashallah, mashallah, it's, you know, like, it's so nice. Oh, you're so blessed. And I don't want to... I don't want to set myself up for disappointment too that I go there and I feel like uh, expecting like a super spiritual like experience and then it isn't you know so I'm kind of like trying to balance that how I'm approaching it in my head with like okay I anticipate that it is going to be very spiritually moving but at the same time I don't want to have like I don't have my expectations so high that I I get disappointed that oh I feel like somehow my hajj wasn't good enough or it wasn't as good as it could have been because I didn't have that like rush of you know or that moment or you know the the crying or whatever it is that people are saying oh you're gonna go it's gonna be like this it's gonna be like that you know so I'm just trying to kind of be present in the moment of where I am right now like that's why like in my head I'm not even like thinking that I'm actually going until I have the visa and I'm like on the plane and I'm going I'm just trying to be in the moments of where I am right now, you know, spending time with my kids now because, uh, you know, that's the time that I have right now with them, spend time with them, and then then I'm going to be leaving them behind. So I'm just trying to kind of be in the moment and not overthink it too much because then I don't want to be disappointed as well and kind of just, you know, set, set myself up for a disappointment, and, you know, uh, whether the physical things that I'm going to have to endure and, and the spiritual things. Um, that, that's an important point. I think like seeing the Kaaba, it gets you every time. It doesn't matter how many times you've been there. It's, every time it impacts you. Um, but yeah, I think I think that's true. Like a lot of people set themselves up like there's going to be this like fantastic religious experience, this moment that changes your whole life. Like one of the most difficult people we had in the group last year. Um, like she, at some point, I just had to have a conversation with her, and she was like. Look, I just got divorced, and I decided immediately to do to come for Hajj because I wanted to start my new life. So she thought like she's gonna come, and it's gonna be like a five star weekend, and you know everything's gonna be like sorted out, and then like her new life is gonna be a new chapter, and she's gonna have a new direction, and everything's gonna be perfect. And when that didn't happen, she was just like complaining the whole time and dragging down the whole group. Um, and I think so. I think that's like a like a major problem that people have. Like, you're gonna witness a fantastic religious experience, but as spiritual an experience it is, it's equally difficult physically, mentally, um, in terms of on your discipline, like for your patience. It's gonna be equally difficult. So, Shafan is yelling now. <laughs> yeah, he's he's getting loud. But that's really interesting. Um, a lot of people who come from North America, especially Canadians, Americans, even like basically from the Western world, the so-called first world developed part of the world, you know, they feel that they're paying the price. So they expect to have a VIP Hajj treatment. And of course, there are the VIP Hajj packages, but... At the end of the day, everyone all over the world is paying a lot more money than it used to be 10, 15 years ago. And when you go for Hajj, 
uh, I find Canadians tend to be fairly picky with things like oh, my bed is one inch higher one inch lower than the other person's bed and why is there such low water pressure I thought this was a four star hotel and there's no water pressure coming out of this tap I saw the room it's a bit wider than our room <laughs> yeah so. simple things like why is there a key for the door and not like one of those electronic card entries like are you seriously gonna pick arguments about these things And but the thing is though, they'll, they'll always go back to the money and say but I'm paying I'm paying yeah everyone is paying to go for Hajj yeah. but it's just you know people think going to Mecca and Medina is going to be that you know vacation time in Cuba or something but that's not what it's about especially not Mecca yeah, yeah. it's interesting like I saw one of the sisters who came with us last year and I was like um, I was telling her like I was, I was like I kept telling you guys during Hajj you're gonna forget all the difficulty like a year later you're two years later you're gonna forget all the difficulty you're, all that's gonna stay with you is like the really good moments right and then I was telling her that I was like wasn't I right and she was like the difficulty was the good moments right <laughs> which is true um, like the hardship you go through um, which is beyond your keys <laughs> your room that hardship is what tests you and after that if you still have sincerity then like then you've experienced the religious moment but if you don't have that sincerity you give it up and you get angry when things don't go your way and whatever then you don't get that to that religious experience or that it gets taken away from you kind of thing yeah i was just reading i was just reading a hadith in the one of Sheikh Allah's books was talking about how Aisha Allah she asked the prophet so uh, you know we we know that jihad is a, a beautiful like one of the most beloved deeds to Allah so we want to do that too and he said that jihad for a woman is uh hajj you know that that because of the physical things you have to endure and all that kind of stuff so like we know that you had this purification you know so the difficulties and struggles and things that you go through that's your purification that's where you you grow spiritually so definitely all of those things like i know for myself my biggest biggest thing is bathrooms <laughs> that's i mean it seems really petty but like my biggest issue is like you know the cleanliness of the bathroom and how i'm gonna go to the bathroom and that's probably my biggest stress right now you know so i mean it's something small but I, okay, okay that's gonna be the jihad of my hajj is enduring the bathrooms you know that's gonna be my my you know struggle i've seen them i know what they look like i've been there and i've seen what they look like and everything but i haven't experienced this with four million people i've experienced it when it was empty you know what i got lucky last year because so our our tents were in this place and then right across the street there's this massive sign and it says uh, you are leaving Mina and right underneath or behind that sign there's a set of washrooms and those washrooms were always empty and I think people were, thought that that sign that says you're leaving Mina is like the actual boundary, boundary of Mina it's just they have these signs like in the general yeah. area, right? So they wouldn't go to that washroom because they're afraid they're leaving Mina. So I just kept going to that washroom. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's there's another uh, another way of getting around the bathrooms where my wife's brother told her last week. If you go to the um, if you go to the pharmacy, they sell these adult diapers. <laughs> you can wear those. <laughs> you really, <laughs> when push comes to shove, you know. <laughs> it's not. It's not just the wash. It's the washrooms are are not in good condition, and then the lineups are huge on the other bathroom. I feel like really on that one, and then it's so hot that you like want to take multiple showers a day, right? And so that makes it even more difficult. And but yeah, so the summer you get the real jihad experience of Hajj. Yeah, my first Hajj was uh, 1988, and that was in July, at the end of July, so roughly around the same time. And uh, it was hot. And those were the days when they didn't have the Kevlar tents, right? Like the new tents are fireproof and there's air conditioning. We didn't have that. The only thing we had was like these canvas made tents. Um, that were super hot and uh, you had to basically peel the sides of your tent away throughout the day so that the air could just you know blow through and the only sort of luxury that we had inside the tent was a water cooler and you'd have to go like every two hours to get this huge cube of ice that you'd carry back to your tent and just put into the cooler so like there was someone that would have to go and get a huge cube of ice and just keep adding to it um, that was it it was really hard I got pretty sick um, I don't know if it was something I ate or you know but the heat I think it was just the heat to be honest uh, but yeah I was like 
like bedridden after that. But you know what? You get through it, alhamdulillah. And you do it because you're, you're doing it for the sake of pleasing Allah and seeking purification. And you know, when you think of all the sins and things that we've done in our life, do we actually think that forgiveness is going to be super easy? Like we're just going just gonna to fly over there, stay in five-star hotels and we'll be forgiven? I mean, if Allah wants to do it, He can do that for us, but uh, there should be an element of sacrifice on our end as well. So that's Hajj. Yeah. That's what the hardship is there to remind you of. But, like, keep asking yourself, why am I here? <laughs> I, I was here. thinking when you were saying initially how like uh, you forget about the difficulties and stuff. I was thinking about when you said that, I was actually thinking about childbirth. Because that's often what my sisters and I, we say to each other is that, Oh, once you have a baby and you go through the childbirth, you're like, oh my gosh, never again. I'm never going to do it again. And then you forget after. And then you're like, oh, it'd be nice to have another little baby. And then you go through it all again and you forget. Like, it's kind of like Allah's mercy on us that he, he kind of, you forget the difficulties and you just remember the how, you know, amazing it was and everything. And you forget that, like, you almost, you want to die when you're in that state. Literally, I, I remember even saying to Daud when I was uh, delivering Marwa, I was in labor for almost three days. And I remember telling him, like, I just want to die. Just take me away from here. I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. And then after that, you forget about it. You know, you, like, you forget that you were ever feeling that way. So when you were talking about how, you know, the, the difficulties are not going to stick with you, you're going to forget about it. I was thinking, I, I believe that, that that probably will happen, that I'll go through hardships and difficulties, but then I'm going to forget all about it. And it's like, if you didn't forget about it, you wouldn't have any more kids. <laughs> <laughs> and if we didn't forget about it, no one else will go for Hajj. Like, you would yeah. just be like completely. And you see all things. kinds of people going. You see old people, people going in wheelchairs, people who are, you know, disabled. And you're like, it inspires you because you think, well, if they can do it, then what's nothing wrong with me? You know, like, well, I can do it too. So you. Especially when you see people who are like from different. Like economic classes, and you know they're walking huge distances just to get to the haram to pray, and they're eating you know like food that is you know beneath our Western standards, and they're you know used to all this different stuff, and uh, yeah, like it's and you, and you see them, and you're just like I don't know how they're doing it, but yeah. they're doing it. So, kind of reminds us that we're really. Uh, I don't know what the right word is. <laughs> we're, we're really uh, like <laughs> kind of spoiled. Spoiled. That's the one. <laughs> but really yeah, it spoiled. is. It is really interesting. Like when you see some of the elderly people from other countries and they barely have slippers on their feet. Like they're wearing something, but you wouldn't classify it as slippers. Uh, and then uh, I know from observing the people who go for Hajj, some of them will wear their ihram even after Hajj is over, just because they have they didn't really bring much clothing or they don't have any other clothing. So like they'll continue wearing their ihram uh, and then maybe just put a kurta or something on top, and that's what they wear. And subhanAllah, when you think of it, some of these people save their entire lives to go on this trip that they still can't really afford, but they just really want to go on it. So it makes us feel, in a way, it makes you feel bad uh, that you haven't been thankful for everything that we have in life. And alhamdulillah, you know, once you get on these these flights and you fly back uh, and you're coming back into the real world, right? You're coming back to your life. Either you make changes or you don't. Uh, and that's really where, you know, you're going to see if, if your hajj had an effect on you or not. So. And you think like you read books of the past and those people took like five years to do Hajj. And they like by the time walking and then they run out of money and they have to work. And till today there's people like that. Like you've come across you've come across people who are just like, Yeah, it took me two years to do Hajj and going from one city to the other and walking and hitching rides and all this stuff in order to go. So yeah, we're we're really spoiled <laughs> and uh, we all have it pretty good. Yep, alhamdulillah. Are you nervous because you're taking your family this time? Um, I'm, I'm sort of nervous, but I travel a lot, so I'm kind of not even prepping mentally for it. I just feel like, okay, I'm going to grab my suitcase and go again, right? Um, but I know this time I'm going for Hajj, so I'm hoping that the experience is going to be different. It is a lot more demanding. Um, and I'm just a little bit concerned because uh, I'm leading the group, but I'm also taking my wife. And I want to do justice to her, but I also want to do justice to the group. Um, so, yeah, that's a little bit tricky. Uh, and at the same time, I want her to have a great Hajj experience. I want to, I want to, you know, be there for my wife, like everyone else is there for their wife. But then you're also expected to give to the group nonstop. So. 
Um, it's a bit tricky, but at the same time, alhamdulillah, she's understanding and <laughs> knows my lifestyle. And hopefully she goes and gets her own food in Mecca because I don't want to be the bellboy running around doing all the things for everyone else and her. <laughs> That's going to be a tricky balance to, to handle. Because like people, when you're the group leader, people won't like respect boundaries either. <clears throat> like I remember people waking me up, Mina, I'm asleep, waking me up, asking me a fifth question while I'm kind of asleep. And I'm answering while I'm asleep. Too. And then they just walk away. <laughs> they, they walk even away and then I wake up. I'm like, wait, did I answer that right? Cause like, <laughs> yeah, it's weird, especially when you're sharing, like even even when you're sharing rooms with people in Makkah and Medina. Yeah. So like you're sharing rooms with other people and they want to ask you questions all day and night, but you got to prepare for lectures and yeah. you know you need to do your research and... It get it gets pretty tricky. I guess the best part for me is we're going back to Mecca and Medina, and I lived there for seven and a half years. So for me, it feels like I'm going back home. So I don't feel nervous in the sense that oh my God, I'm gonna be out of place. Like I I lived there, so I'm used to it, and I actually really love being there. So for me, it's like yeah, let's go, <laughs> let's go, let's do it. Alhamdulillah. I think uh, I, like because he lived there for so long and I was living in Montreal, I lived vicariously through him, you know, like uh, all of his experiences and what, how he would talk about the people and stuff. So when I did go last year for Umrah, I kind of, I, I didn't feel like I was in a strange place, you know, like I felt comfortable. I felt I was able to move around by myself without doubt, go out, go for walks, go, like that kind of thing. And I didn't feel you know strange or like uh, scared or like not able to like handle things for myself so i feel like you know inshallah it's it's gonna be okay that you know he's leading the group and i know a lot of the times what happens is that because uh i'm a woman i'll get all the women coming and asking me all the questions like it already started we had a hajj workshop and then all the sisters came and started asking me all of their period questions and uh, can you take the pill and what are you packing and what hijab should i bring and all of those questions kind of came to me so i'm gonna have to make sure that i kind of be careful with that too you know that i don't end up doing I think the biggest thing for us is just that we're going to be sleeping in different rooms. So that's our first time going anywhere on a trip and we won't be sharing rooms. So that's, I think, the biggest, like, that's so weird. Like, at the end of the day, I'm going to go to my room and you're going to go to your room. And that's, like, a very weird thing for us. So I think that's probably the, the biggest thing. It might be weird for you, but some men would like that. I mean, you get to spend part of your day with your wife and at the end of the day, it's like, whoo. You get a break. <laughs> yeah. People, yeah. people pay a lot more money <laughs> to do that. Yeah, actually, we but could start up a Hajj and Omrah, Omrah trips where you, have you to be separate. <laughs> vacation from your wife. <laughs> you fly together, but you know what? You're going to be together the whole day, anyways. It yeah, that's like the thing. Yeah, it's just the times that you're going to sleep, anyways. Yeah. And yeah. But that, that's a good point. But the opposite side is that if you do a lot of that helping, then you got that in your resume, then you go to a Hajj group next year, and you're like, hey, we're both going to be leading the groups. So. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping that that actually does. Yeah. Uh, end up being the case that you know we both get to go for hajj maybe not every single year but yeah. regularly and uh maybe do some armada trips as well yeah. yeah i was gonna say i was gonna say that uh, one thing that um i'll be doing this year uh, i was asked i was approached by the being me um sisters and they asked me to do a video a diary of the trip so they were asking if i could do a uh, a video every day to send, you know, from whatever we're doing on the on the trip and that kind of thing. So I'm probably going to be doing something along those lines, a small like video every day of, you know, the experiences or something spiritual or you know just that kind of thing. But like, as a diary, so I'll probably be doing that for the Being Me uh, sisters. So we'll go up on their website or whatnot. Inshallah, we could check that out. That's a great idea. I wanted to do something similar last year, just like write posts every day. I did a few of them and then like I was just then you get to busy. Yeah. And then I was not able to. But no, that's that's awesome because when you're there, you're just like it's like you're hooked up to the machine and like all of these thoughts are coming and all of these like wisdoms and gems yeah. are coming to your mind. But so it's, it's a great time to, yeah. to be sharing. And then once you leave, you're like forget all of it. Fortunately. Yeah, alhamdulillah. I guess that's a benefit to going and you know it refreshes your your iman and helps you coming back. Yeah. Yeah. But that, and when I look back at the things I did right, it like brings back all those memories. And it's like so so useful to you even like uh, just to later on go back and review it and you feel like well, then you feel like the way you felt when you were right there and you get to relive all, yeah. relive. All He's a lawyer. That, so. I have to put a. Alhamdulillah. Well, jazakumullah khair. I actually think. Okay. 
Maybe we're going to split this podcast into two. Yeah, I think you should. <laughs> one about Hajj and one about the Shekhana. But this was awesome. And I didn't even ask you guys permission. You guys just jumped in, mashallah. I were we really supposed to sign a that. waiver form? Or? <laughs> <laughs> well, usually, at least I ask. Before you know, I whenever you do with Ibrahim Hindi, you end up in the media. <laughs> <laughs> no power of my own. It just happens. That's what happened to me last time in Hajj. That's when the whole... That's exactly uh, it. Yeah, the yeah, fake news. The, the fake news yeah. thing, yeah. And I was walking, so I saw it, someone tagged me in it. And like, I woke up in the hotel in Mecca and I saw it. You're an imam in the US. And I was like, this is so stupid. I'm not even gonna respond to it. And then later on, we were walking to the Jamarat. And then I'm like, you know, maybe I should just post something about it. So I posted that tweet and I don't even use Twitter. At that time, like I rarely ever use it. And I had like less than a hundred followers, like, just nothing. And I just posted it anyways. And then the rest of Mina, all I'm getting is notifications because it got retweeted 200,000 times. Like it went crazy. And then like I'm getting media requests and CBC wants to like interview me. And I'm like, I'm in Saudi Arabia and they block spy- Skype. So I don't know what you want me to do for you right now. So, but it, it was insane. That was an insane moment like, for, to get like media attention and people wanting to interview you and your face is all over the news. And I was on BBC's website, like on the t- one of the top stories. And, I was like, and you just want to make dua and go, <laughs> go to the Kaaba. If I knew. SubhanAllah. Every time it's like something crazy like this happens. Uh, I was just like, just pile it onto the other tests. We <laughs> got a whole bunch here. Just throw it on. But uh, anyways, Jazakum al I really appreciate this. And I definitely want to do um, one with like with my wife as well and like the four of us sit down. I think that would be such a cool Yeah, cool sure, podcast. that would be nice. Inshallah. We like chit chatting, we like hanging out. <laughs> that would be fun. Inshallah. We can have you guys over and I guess live near us anyways. I mean, that's past due anyways. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Try to keep those uh, around a little bit more so that we can do that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Jet setting everywhere. <laughs> he told me he was uh, taking it easy from now on. I am. I ask her. Now I can, now I can ask Documents. her. Documents. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I will see, inshallah. We'll <laughs> see how that goes. Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah khair again. Assalamu alaikum.